I'll show you my lip tie. Good morning, loves. Today, well, first of all, we're pumping. Little man slept like a champ last night. He ate at what, nine? And then he woke up around 11 when we were getting ready to go to bed. We were getting ready around like 10.30 and then he woke up. So fed him then. And then he slept until four and then he slept again and I had to wake him up, almost wake him up. I opened the blinds and he woke up himself. At eight o'clock, he would have kept sleeping. I could have kept sleeping. But we have an appointment today for his tongue tie and his lip tie. He actually has a lip tie right there. I'm showing you mine because I have it too. Oh, little man. So I'll explain what everything is, but little man's getting upset. I'm gonna pump while I give him a bath, freshen him up for his appointment, and then I'll show you guys or tell you guys everything about it. The lactation consultant sent me to a pediatric orthodontist, not a pediatrician, I'll tell you why, but let's go take care of little man. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sure you can hear him whimpering. I decided since, you know, he's not feeling the hottest today that we're gonna do lots of skin to skin. So I took off my dress, I took off his clothes. I wrapped him in this bobo wrap and he can breastfeed whenever he wants today. So hopefully he'll latch. I breastfed him in the orthodontist office and he latched really well. It didn't hurt me as bad in the beginning. So I'm sure it'll take a minute for him to figure out his new latch, but let's rewind. My sister's two sons have a tongue tie. My grandfather, who died seven or eight years ago at 88 years old, told my sister when she told my family that her boys were tongue tied, that he was tongue tied when he was born and the midwife just had to clip his tongue. He didn't say the phrase tongue tied, but she told me from the minute I found out I was having a boy, apparently it's more, according to her, I don't know how true it is or not, but apparently it's more common in boys but she when i found out and her daughter did not have a tongue tie so when i found out i was having boys she's like make sure you have them check for a tongue tie immediately and be persistent about it because they told me two separate times that it wasn't a tongue tie and i insisted and then she brought him to the dentist and it was and then with her second son the same thing happened at the hospital they said that it was not a tongue tie and then when she left the hospital on her way home, literally with a two day old, she stopped at the dentist who did her first son's tongue tie and who released the tongue tie. And they were like, how old is this baby? And she said two days and they're like, whoa, this is the youngest baby we've ever seen. And she made a point to say this was pre COVID when she told me this, which I thought was funny. But at the hospital, the lactation consultant 
took a look at him and I liked her, but she told me some stuff that, well, not that it's incorrect because everybody has their own theories, but she told me some stuff that wound up working against me. Number one, that he wasn't tongue tied. Number two, she told me not to pump my milk for at least six weeks, no pumping at all, which I've come to find out is a theory, but if you have a low milk supply, a baby with a bad latch like I did, then that's kind of counterproductive because you drop, your, your milk supply is low. So I was like, great, no tongue tie, even though I was in so much pain and my nipples were so bruised and swollen and scabbed that I would wince every time I would try to get him to latch and feed him for my breast, I would cry. I was in more pain during that than I was throughout my whole entire labor and delivery, although I had an easy one and I had an epidural. I was, I have a very high pain tolerance being an athlete my whole life. And this was probably one of the most excruciating things that I've ever done. And as I did more research, I discovered that it's not normal. Yes, it's normal to be in pain, but it's not normal to be in excruciating pain, bleeding, that bruised, that chapped, etc. So when CJ, when my baby was two months old, two days old, he's not even two months old yet. When he was two days old, I had to bring him back to the pediatrician because I went into labor so early, not so early, I was 30, almost 38 weeks, but so early that I hadn't gotten my uh, group B strep swab yet. And they did it at the doctor when they found out, when they discovered I was in labor at the doctor, go back and watch my birth vlog if you haven't seen that story yet, but I'm sorry, I feel so at a loss for words because I'm overtired, brand new mom up at night. Also, I wanted to give CJ a bath this morning before the doctor's appointment because I hadn't bathed him in a few days, probably close to a week. I just Googled yesterday how often you're supposed to bathe a newborn because I was, I always remember being told not every day, it's not good for their immune system. I don't know how true it is or not, but I on Google it says you can bathe up to three times a week in the first year of life and I felt like he was starting to get a little stinky so I bathed him this morning anyway I'm in so many tangents but I hope if you're a new mom you can learn something anyway that pediatrician was so nasty to me he told me that my baby was gonna die if I did not give him formula that he was gonna put him in the hospital if he did not gain weight in three days that he was gonna give me three days to fatten him up basically he was so nasty he told me I was too old uh, that my milk supply probably wouldn't come in. He accused me and Adam of lying to him because we told him that we conceived naturally. And then he was like, but how long were you trying? S is how long we knew each other. Like it was just very condescending. That is in my, I feel like a failure when I talked about my pumping and how I'm trying to increase my milk supply video that I will link up there. But anyway, during there, I had him check. I said, my sister said that her son, sons had tongue ties. Can you check him? And he said, he did. And he said, no, he's fine. So about a week later, I finally made a consultation <coughs> with, he squeaks. I finally made an appointment with a lactation consultant because I'm trying everything, everything I can to breastfeed a little man. I'm still pumping. I'm not creating too, too much milk. I'm getting about an ounce to two ounces per pump, not per side, per pump typically, per pumping session, 20 to 30 minutes. And I try to do between every hour and every two hours because I'm trying to increase it. I've done power pumping, I've done all that. But anyway, so I'm giving him as much breast milk as I can, but he's eating, now he's about, I don't know, he's heavy. He's probably 10 pounds at this point at four weeks old, but I'm giving him about, he wants about, two to four ounces per feeding. And I just, I don't have that much breast milk. So I, I'm supplementing with formula and I'm fine with it, it's fine. But I went to the lactation consultant because I'm really on a mission to try to breastfeed. I am such an athlete, such an competitor that I'm not good when my body's not good at something. I will do anything and everything to do right by my little guy. And not that not breastfeeding is wrong. I mean, I'm fine with it, but I want to so bad. I was breastfed for a year, all of my five siblings, we were all breastfed for over a year and I just wanna be able to do it. So I did make an appointment with a lactation consultant. She was 
incredible. I booked her for an hour. She stayed with me for an hour and a half and only charged me for an hour. She taught me so much, followed up with email. She was incredible. But I told her that the pediatrician said that he wasn't tongue tied and she kind of made a face, but like she let it go. And then later she said, he's got a really tight lip and a really tight tongue. And she showed me under his tongue and she said, look, it looks like the Eiffel Tower. She said, that's a slight tongue tie. She said, in this town, all the pediatricians won't diagnose a tongue tie unless the bottom of the tongue, like where it attaches, is attached all the way at the front. So it's like extremely severe and extremely dramatic, but there's different levels. And she also explained, which I found fascinating and I'll pass along to you, is that under the tongue, that little part that attaches, I'll try to find a picture and put it up there because you might be like, what in the world is a tongue tie? And what are we like 10, 15 minutes into this video? I'm telling you. So it's the part that attaches the tongue to the bottom of the mouth. It's like that little line of tissue. That's actually embryonic tissue. And when you're pregnant, it's there in everybody. And you're, as you get to, I want to say she said like 17 weeks, something like that in utero, a 17 week old fetus, their body is supposed to absorb all of that embryonic tissue and just leave that normal flap of skin tissue, whatever that is, muscle, I'm not sure, there. But in a lot of people, it's not absorbed all the way. So that's actually embryonic tissue. The reason why it's being diagnosed more recently is there's a theory that has not been proven. I've watched a gajillion YouTube videos about this. And one of the nurse, no, she's a nurse, an RN that I follow that is incredible. I love everything about her. She said that there have been studies that indicate or haven't proven, but indicate that it could possibly be because of all of the folic acid that we take in our pregnancies and prior to pregnancies in more modern years that could potentially be causing tongue ties and even lip ties, which we'll get to. So back to his tongue tie, your body's supposed to absorb all of that and it didn't, it doesn't in some people and that causes the tongue to be really tight. So in my son's case, he can't stick out his tongue can't latch correctly. When he eats off a bottle, you'll hear click, 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 a clicking sound. So that means he's latching and unlatching over and over again. That's the reason why it hurts. My nipples so bad and they get so chapped and they get so bloody and they hurt. They just hurt. It's like excruciating because he's chomping on me and he's biting because his tongue isn't moving in like this wave type of pattern that a normal tongue without a tongue tie is supposed to move. So all of that together creates not only issues with breastfeeding, but it could also create issues later in life, such as she called it orthodontia. So having needing orthodontic, orthodontist, what is that? Intervention, orthodontic intervention later in life for your teeth to be fixed or straightened out if that's something that you want. Speech issues because the tongue isn't hitting the roof of the mouth, right? It's not sticking out, right? It's, it's, the thrust is wrong. So speech issues, which I knew of those two, what I was not aware of is it can cause grinding issues. It can cause, so um, TMJ, where your jaw is tight, you clench it, you grind your teeth, which I don't have, a diagnosed TMJ. I was checked for it once because I do grind my teeth and I chomp my teeth really bad at night. So I've needed a night guard for years. And when my lactation consultant told me that she needed a night guard because of her tongue tie, I was like, holy crap. But I don't think that I'm necessarily tongue tied because and just wasn't diagnosed because I breastfed beautifully. My teeth came in completely fine and I have no speech impediment. I have a horrible Jersey accent, but no speech impediment. So, but it could also cause issues with breathing and necessity for a sleep, uh, a CPAP machine. So sleep apnea later in life because your tongue kind of blocks your airway because it's tight. And I have noticed a few times that CJ will all of a sudden just be like gagging, but he hasn't eaten. He's not spit up, nothing like that. Like out of nowhere, he'll just gag. My mother-in-law was here and she even noticed it. We both got scared. I'm like, oh my God, did he get like hair in his mouth? Like what just happened? 
and they told me that that could be the case. So lactation consultant was not pushy about it, but she recommended a couple of orthodontists. One does not take any insurance. It's supposed to be the best in town. Second does take insurance and is almost equally as good. The only reason why the other one's the best in town is because they have lactation consultants, chiropractors and massage therapists all there for the day of the procedure so they can work and help loosen the tongue and the mouth too. I, of course, I don't know if it's obvious or not, but I went with the one who took insurance, had my consult last week. Adam was there. He was incredible. I called my sister and I was like, I'm really sad that your daughter is not old enough to marry somebody because I would set them up because not only is he adorably cute, he was so amazing with the baby, so sweet, like just such a great bedside manner. Thank God, because I needed that after my horrible experience with the pediatrician, but he gave us all of our options and they said a lot of times dental insurance does not cover this procedure. They're going to put it through my insurance, she said, but even if they don't, we'll give you a 20% discount because that's how much they believe in this procedure. Also, not only is he tongue tied, he has his lip tied, his lip is tight. So that's the part underneath between your lip and like your gum that hold your lip together. Now, I know for a fact I am. Here's why. That is made out of elastin. My two front teeth came in with a huge gap. I had a huge gap up until I was 21 years old. I went to the orthodontist. I went to multiple orthodontists throughout my youth, my preteen years, my teenage years, because I did not like that gap in my teeth. I like think Madonna gap. If I can find a picture, I will add one in. I'll look through my baby books, but sorry. I'm sticking to the chair. I'll look through my baby books, but I don't even know where like my teenage pictures are in the house. Everything's just kind of still in boxes in the closet from our move from New Jersey. But every single orthodontist and dentist that I went to said that it, there was no point in giving me braces because they're because of that lip tie. They recently started calling it, but that's what it was. Unless they snipped it, they cut it loose, they released it lip tie, then it, they wouldn't work. My teeth would shift with the braces. And as soon as I got them off, they would shift right back. Retainer doesn't matter. It's just that that lip tie was so strong that it would push my teeth back apart unless I got it snipped. Well, same with little man, he had that. So number one, I got it released because it'll help him breastfeed and eat, but hopefully it'll help him not need braces in the future. So the option was to go to a pediatrician, but they were mecha, were mecha I am so out of it. You could hear them talking like slow and I'm having a hard time finding my thoughts because overtired mama, I ate like a little, um, little granola pop. I'll show you guys. I don't even know what they're called from Costco in the car on the way to the orthodontist because I didn't have time this morning, drank only one um, liter of water. So I'm getting ready to eat as soon as I can just get him to stay okay. I just wanted to make sure he was okay first and it was stressful. So I'm kind of, and I have a headache now from it. So I'm kind of slow, but please bear with me. The reason they didn't <clears throat> recommend going to the pediatrician is because they use a scalpel. They'll use scissors still. And when they told me, she told me that I winced and she was like, it's, it's okay. Like they do a good job, but they, if they don't cut far back enough with the scissor, then it'll release it enough to maybe breastfeed, but it's not going to alleviate all of those potential issues in the future if they don't cut, cut it deep enough. But what the dentists and orthodontists do is they'll use a laser. It's a five second, literally five second, if that procedure. They don't even numb baby because one, it'll hurt baby more to get a shot or to numb or whatever. But more importantly, second of all, you want the baby to latch onto your breasts or to eat almost immediately, if not immediately after the procedure, because it soothes them, but also you're trying to reteach them how to latch properly now that it's relieved. If they're numb, they're not going to be able to latch. They're not going to be able to eat at all. So, and plus it's more traumatic to numb them. So told us all of this, we were fine with it, made the appointment. That was this morning. We took him in, 
they were so sweet. My appointment was originally at 8.30. They called me yesterday and they're like, can we move it to 10? And I said, sure, that's fine. I checked with Adam, he could still come. And the girl who helped me with the appointment was like, thank God we have a procedure early at eight o'clock. It's gonna take a really long time. I didn't want you guys stuck in the waiting room for that long. So she came in, her name was Heaven, first of all. How sweet is that name? But, and she was like an angel. She went through what they were going to do. You know, they were going to swaddle him with their swaddle. The, they would do the procedure. The doctor would go over the mouth exercises we need to do with him over the next actually four weeks. And then I could feed him to soothe him. And then, because when she came in, I was giving him a bottle and she was like, you might want to hold off feeding him if you can, because that'll soothe him. And I said, well, should I put him on my breast? And she, because that's where we're here. That's the issue she was having. And she was like, absolutely. And then she was sweet. She like lowered her voice because it's kind of private. I don't, I mean, I don't care. But she said, that'll help him. She said, once we release them, usually they're kind of like all over the place because they need to learn how to relatch. But absolutely, the breast is going to comfort him and soothe him anyway. So did that, made our payment. She left. She came back like 20 minutes later extremely apologetic and she was like i am so sorry it's taking so long we had a little a young girl who needed a root canal and she was all swollen and i knew it was going to take a really long time that's why we changed your appointment she said i'm still so sorry and she gave us free bunlet bunlet cakes i guess they're like little personal bunk cakes coupons for free two free ones because we had to wait for so long and i was like oh my god thank you so much they didn't have to do that but my niece is coming labor day weekend my little baby so she's not my little baby anymore she's 13 but my sister and her husband are coming to visit and they're bringing her because she we're really close so i'll take her to get bunk cakes doctor came in he asked me if he loved christian's outfit so he said oh my gosh he's so cute and i was like well he would say thank you but he's got his mouth full so i was feeding him and he was like his mouth is full he was very sweet i love this guy so he said does baby like to be swaddled and i was like yes except he hates having his hands in hates it and he can get his hands out of just basically anything so he said okay he was like we're gonna swaddle him because you really want his hands in for this because you know they put their hands up they fight they put them in their mouth so he swaddled him cj hated it for a minute but he was so good with him he massaged his cheeks got him situated and then he showed me how to do the little stretches for his upper lip you just kind of hold it up towards his nostrils for five seconds, three times every four hours for four weeks. His tongue is basically the same thing. You hold his chin down with your middle fingers, then you take your index fingers and you hold his tongue up towards his nostrils. I hate it because you hear him kind of like <laughs> choking a little bit, but five seconds, three times every four hours and you can kind of massage his cheeks in between and he hated it but once he massaged the baby hated it but once the doctor massaged his cheeks he got him calm and then he said okay we'll be right back and me and adam looked at each other like because my sister i guess when they did it for my sister she was in the room and when i asked her i'm like how bad is it she's like it hurts mommy more than it does baby she, i said am i gonna cry and she goes have adam stay in the room step out of the room so I was planning to be strong and stay in the room, but they took him, which I get because baby sobs. When they brought him back in, he wasn't necessarily crying, but he was whimpering. And he doctor said, you know, he did great. And he handed, he said, you might want to feed him. And he hand, handed the baby back to me. We had to adjust our little wrap. I'm still learning how to wear these, but the lighting here is terrible. I should have brought my ring light in here. I'm sorry. But... So they um, handed him, he handed him to me and he started to cry and I almost lost it. His eyes were swollen and red and all the tears were in them and it took everything inside of me not to shed tears. And Adam was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm okay. And the doctor said, okay, like basically like, okay, that's it. If you do have any questions and I said, no, he's like, okay, we'll see you every week for a follow up for four weeks. And he left the room and Adam's like, do you want to try to breastfeed him? And I said, yes. So he shut the door and the blinds in the exam room for me. And I breastfed him and he's like, he looks traumatized. And that part tore my heart into pieces. CJ latched really well and he fed really well. It still hurt me a little bit, but I'm really sore on the side that he nursed on because I tried to nurse him last night before the latch, before I got his tongue released. 
and his lip released. So I just decided that he's gonna do as much skin to skin today and breastfeed as much and as long as he wants all day today and little guy will hopefully heal just fine. I'll keep you guys posted. They also told me, and I totally forgot, I feel like such a bad mom, to give baby baby Tylenol before we got there. I don't even have baby Tylenol. All the Karens are gonna come on here and tell me I'm the worst mom ever and I shouldn't have a baby at 40 years old because I don't know anything. Pff, go scratch. But I am gonna try to door dash some baby Tylenol because I don't want to take little guy out again. He's had a rough day. And then he just, he went bird. You know, he was really, like you could just see in his face. And Adam put him in his car seat and he's like, I don't like this. Like he's so traumatized. And I was like, put a knife in my heart. But he fell asleep. He slept the whole way home. He's been sleeping. I'm sure he'll sleep a lot of the day. Poor little guy. Which buys me time to get him some baby Tylenol here. I know it was the right thing to do. I mean, let's think about it like this. Sleep apnea alone shortens your life by like 20 years or something insane if you don't get it fixed or where your sleep happened. Every single person I know personally, I'm not saying that people don't, but every single person that I know personally who has a CPAP machine doesn't use it. So I know it was necessary, but it breaks my heart. So there's that, here's little man. Little guy is just chilling in there. Hopefully that helped somebody who is having latching issues, breastfeeding issues, any kind of issues. I apologize for the lighting in here, but I wanted to get this done and now it's time for me to eat and little guy to maybe breastfeed a little bit. Let me know what you guys think if you have experiences with tongue ties, lip ties. I'll show you my lip tie. Do you see how much, like how thick and strong that is, that piece of tissue is? So that, and you could see the reason I don't have a, well, as severe of space in my teeth is that this is bonding. So he just built up my teeth, it's fake. And then you could see like he didn't even do, he didn't do the best job because first of all, there's still a space there, a tiny space. I mean, my space was Madonna huge, but second of all, I don't like the way, like the shape of the tooth isn't perfect. It's fine. It's fine. I've had it since I was 21 years old, lasted forever, but there's that. All right. Here's an update. Little man ate a little bit from my breast, but I don't make enough milk and it's not going to magically just come in just because he had his tongue fixed. So he ate off both sides. I fed him a little bit of pumped, not a little bit. I fed him about three or four ounces of pumped breast milk fell asleep for a while, woke up screaming. So I tried to feed him again. I thought maybe he didn't eat enough. He did not want the bottle. Changed his wet diaper. Normally that'll be enough. He's a very, very easy baby. He never cries unless something's wrong. I changed his diaper and it didn't do anything. He was screaming. I looked, oh my God, I'm cry. I looked down at his little face and he was in so much pain. And I went right on DoorDash and I door dashed baby Tylenol. So it should be here. It should be here in, I don't know. It's 2.48, it said between three and 3.05. I placed it a couple minutes ago. And thank God, I like rocked him, I walked around with him, and he just fell asleep. I've not done anything today and I don't care. Like my house is a disaster. I have a bowl of oatmeal. that I made hours ago, maybe 11 o'clock, it's three. And I don't care, he's just, he's my top priority little guy. So if you guys are not familiar with DoorDash, I got you a code down below in the description box, but it's saving the day because I can't, I don't wanna take him out. I'm doing skin to skin to try to help him feel better. And the last thing I wanna do is put him in his car seat. He doesn't like getting in there and I don't want to make him feel any more uncomfortable. A little guy, it makes me feel guilty for even doing it, but I know it was necessary, so. Right on cue. All right, I love you guys. Let me know if you have questions. Me and baby C are out.
say bye everybody bye everybody thank you for subscribing subscribe for this little face give this video a thumbs up because you know you want to do it for that sweet sweet face love you guys see you in the next one Mwah.